Bullseye, Eye, David Glover, uh, Slims the Bank over here at FLO Empire Network uh, for another episode of the Put Me On Podcast. And I have a guest today. Uh, she's went through hell to get here, but she's here. I need you to introduce yourself to the people. Hello, everyone. It's Kendra Black. I'm a performing artist from New York. And uh, yes, tomorrow I actually leave for uh, my first tour date in Memphis. And oh, today okay, okay. I am right here. All right, so basically you're a performing artist. So, like, would you put yourself in any category, or would you just say I'm a performing artist? Well, I'm a singer, but I'm also a dancer. That's part of my um, background, and I also incorporate it in my videos and my live shows and everything. So, uh, yeah, obviously I'm uh, a singer first of all. <laughs> all right, and and you said are you going on tour? How many cities? Uh, well, I'm doing Memphis at the end of this month. Then I'll have some shows in New York in between. And then after, I'm doing um, the Atlantic City promo only summer sessions and uh, more shows in New York and probably uh, more um, tour dates in November that are coming. All right. So I have to ask you this question. Are you going on a tour? Is it a promotional tour or are you just trying to get some money? Uh, oh no! I mean, it's promotional tour. It's uh, you know, it's uh, everything. Getting myself out there, getting my music out there, performing, uh, seeing different cities, and uh, you know, spreading the word about my music and what I do. All right, and um, do you have an album out? Like, what are you, what are you promoting? Yeah, I just released my new album, The Fire, on February first this year, and uh, it's been going pretty well. Um, my previous album, The Edge, uh, featured Snoop Dogg. This album. Um, does not have a feature because the feature is coming out separately with Spice One um, in uh, a few months, about two months, I think, before we start doing promotion. So that's going to be out soon. Um, and now this tour is to promote my new album, The Fire. Okay, okay. And and basically, uh, what uh, separates your first album from from this album? Like, like, have you seen the growth? Yeah, well, I evolved um, when it comes to my uh, musical style. I used to be more pop, R&B, hip-hop, and now I'm drifting a little bit more towards electronic and alternative. Um, overall, it's still me, like it's still my sound, but uh, there is a, a definite evolution from uh, my sound before to more electronic current sounds. All right, so, so like with, with your electronic music, uh, is it like the, the festival kind of music? Like, 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 like 30,000, 40,000 ravers? It's pumping. Yes, but it has a lot more songwriting elements. Um, when I performed uh, in Texas uh, about two months ago, um, people were really uh, hyped by my new single, This Love, which is one of the most electronic ones. And, um, you know, I'm definitely um, planning to remix and do more music that is uh, very, like, rave-like and festival fitting, but um, my music still has a lot of songwriting elements that I don't want to lose. So I would say it's a combination of the two. All right, because like I'm gonna have you play a song. I hope that you know, and mm -hmm. and that's why I left you that nice little chord right in front of you. See that Great. aux chord? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I, I need to hear some of the music, but we're not gonna mm -hmm. get into that. I want I want to get to know you. Um, so basically, like I, I listen to like a lot of different music, right? And I definitely do hear like a lot of EDM. Do lack the songwriting um, part of it and. I'm looking forward to actually hearing your music incorporated with it, and uh, because like a lot of EDM music really don't tell a story. Yeah, it, I agree. it's mainly for high energy, get wasted, you mm -hmm. know, have a good time, <laughs> and don't worry about anything, um, you know, kind of vibe. So yeah. basically, um, when, when when you first started, like, what made you say I will actually want to start songwriting? Um, well, when I first started singing, I was really young. Um, at the time, I was uh, mostly Were you six? in my. Uh, I was actually, but right, um, just that sure. was <laughs> why. I, I didn't want to pick a number, and I'm like, can I can I can I pick the right number? Six. Oh, I was like, maybe my consultant told him. No. Nope. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, I, I, uh, it came out my brain. Go, awesome. ahead, go ahead. But yeah, uh, I was mostly in the ballet background. Um, I used to do ballet professionally. I still do it, although it's not part of like my active career anymore. It's kind of something I do for me. Um, so when I started singing, it was mostly because um, it was an outlet for me. I was really gifted. Uh, at the time, I didn't really take uh, vocal lessons, and I then started because I realized that 
it was something I really wanted to do and uh, I wanted to like eventually switch from ballet to music and make music my career. So I would say around 17 years old is when I made the, the uh, main moves in music and uh, you know, everything started for real. And, and to this day, do you still take vocal lessons? Yeah. Well, because like, I, I think that a lot of recording artists, um, mainly like singers, mm -hmm. they'll take vocal lessons to learn a, a few things and then they'll stop. And I always tell artists that for their whole career, they should always take vocal lessons because their voice is always yeah. going to be changing. And it's always good to learn different techniques and also I need um, to keep it trained because exactly. it's like it's basically muscles so you need to you know if you take one vocal lesson and then you don't really do the training part at home or in another vocal lesson it doesn't really like serve you much it all depends on how much you do on, on your own time as well all right and, and um, do, do you have a vocal coach in New York yeah do you want to shout them out Sure. Um, I take vocal lessons with Justin Stoney, uh, the founder of uh, New York um, Vocal Coaching, and uh, uh, Ilana Martin and uh, Naomi uh, from the New York uh, Vocal Workout Singing School. Uh, hopefully, they'll give you a discount for giving them that shout out. You know, <laughs> up on your next monthly fee or class or whatever way that they actually um, do it. Because I, th I think that it's always good to give people recognition. Yeah. You know, because we don't do it by ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's like you, you're the frontliner, you, you're the face of of the brand but there's so many different there's so many pieces in the that, background that help me and that like yeah. don't be acknowledged mm -hmm. sometimes you yeah. know you have choreographers you have videographers you have photographers you have mm -hmm. graphic designers you have producers you have engineers yeah. you have booking agents you have managers and you know all the other good stuff mm -hmm. but um do you have any videos out Oh, uh, well, yes. The music video for my single with Snoop Dogg, Rude, uh, is available on YouTube, Vivo. It's reached uh, almost 70,000 uh, K views, so I'm really happy. Keeps growing. Um, I also have the music video out for my single, Air Pack Jet, from the same album. And as far as the new album, the videos will be filmed this summer. All right, okay, okay. Do you have a lead single? Uh, yeah, This Love, which is what I'm probably going to play as Isn't soon as we get to that. that. Isn't that <laughs> wrong with that? Now, um, we're, we're, with the Snoop Dogg, mm -hmm. right? Because I never met Snoop Dogg, mm. right? I think I want to. And I want to retire, so maybe I'll go out to Cali and go find him somewhere. Cali is great. Yeah. So, um, like, what made you choose to reach out to Snoop Dogg, and how did that whole process um, happen? Well, um, the album, The Edge, I recorded in L.A. with uh, Mike Gonsolin and Nick Nitaly from the Trend F Studios. Um, and uh, they're also the same producers that work with Snoop Dogg. Um, so that's how it was born, basically. Uh, we recorded the, um, the two uh, main singles, Rude and Airpack Jet. And then we were thinking about how a rapper would sound great on Rude. And then uh, Snoop Dogg has always been my favorite rapper. And, you know, it's uh, obviously, you know, a blessing that it came so fast. But uh, that was... The, um, you know my dream feature no no my question is did you get him for the video too uh no <laughs> ah. almost, <laughs> but the video almost. is pretty cool yeah oh actually i still want to see the video too yeah. so everybody go check out the video oh you're, you're on camera too there's a camera right in front of you on the oh table. yeah <laughs> so um so basically go um go check out that video um and so so you go to memphis mm -hmm. because when, when you said memphis right because like i don't like to be prepped for my interviews I like to actually get to know the person right there look at you in your eyes mm -hmm. and get to know everything as the people are getting to know everything and when you said Memphis I thought that you were going to say that he was a country singer oh no because, you know Memphis <laughs> you know no, first no. stop you know I'm like, okay okay yeah. you know because um, like um, do you actually rap too um yes but it's more of like a softer rap you know like uh, in my song Air Pack Dead it's mostly like a sung rap you know it, it, it's like a is it like a Beyonce kind of rap? Um, no, if I had to compare myself to someone, I would say Tinashe, okay. K Flay. All right. Uh, you know, or, uh, well, Ariana Grande doesn't rap, but. <laughs> about some like the vocal range. About, yeah. you know, um, her voice. Yeah. All right, all right. So, what I want to do is, I want you to plug in. Mm -hmm. I want you to play one of your songs, and then we're going to come back and we're going to wrap it up and everything. Awesome. But, um, plug in. And do you already have your song already loaded up? Yes, just need to get it. All right, she needs to go and get that. She needs to go. She, I didn't. I didn't prepare her. I'm sorry. She ran in. I'm like, all right, sit down. We're going live. And then she's like, all right. Oh, that was pretty quick. I said, she don't be playing. She like, voila. All right, so we're gonna hear the main single of my new album, The Fire. It's called This Love.
And she's plugging it. Plug it in, plug it in. We are almost there. The anticipation. Oh, oh, oh is she looking for the iPhone? Yeah. Adapter? Oh, she got it? Mm-hmm. All right. Give me one second to it's get coming, it. It's uh, coming. The anticipation, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be worth the wait. I'm assuming. If uh, I had known I had to plug this in, I would already it was it's ready. Okay. It's all good. It's <laughs> unlock all. my phone on that. Um. Uh, she, she was over there watching Netflix on on the subway, so so she uh, she don't want to play that movie right now. So uh, we going we going to get it done, but um, just to let everybody know. Um, oh, you got it. Yep. All right, introduce it again. Or oh, do she have it? There we go. No, she got it. All right, she don't. All right, it's plugged in. That's here. All right. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Wrong plug. This one? Yeah. Uh, it is right here. Okay. She got it, ladies and gentlemen. Don't worry. We got this. Well, oh, no. she, she needs the iPhone adapter. See, see, that's why I don't like about Apple products. Right? <laughs> because like, they have all these little pieces that like, you have to purchase for like $25 just for that little piece right there. Like, do you think that, that piece costs like 13 cents? <laughs> and then they charge you like $25 just so you can be able to plug in. Are you all set? Yep, you're right. All right, here we go. All right.
Yes, 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 yes. All right. I really enjoyed that. Um, we have Joel up in the chat room. He said uh, it's different, and that's why I like it. Uh, it got that. I just got out of work, and it was payday, so I'm buying me and my friends a drink type of vibe. That's, okay. <laughs> that's what he wrote. Love it. <laughs> I'm like, well, that's a, that's a long vibe right there. Like, right? It, it, it was specific. Mm-hmm. But uh, tomorrow is Friday. Tomorrow yeah. is payday for some people. So there you go. I guess that um, he'll be um, buying his friends some drinks while downloading your album. Mm-hmm. Um, what's the name of the album again? The Fire. And it's available on all online platforms, Spotify, um, iTunes, um, YouTube, Apple Music. Title, everywhere. title, 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 title. Mm-hmm. The Fire by Kendra Black. And this was the main single, This Love. Yeah, and um, title pays the second most royalty. So... Everybody, title, 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 title. Uh, do you know what the first is? The hmm. Uh, which platform pays the most? Oh, uh, Apple Music, I think. Nope. Or Spotify. Nope. Especially not Spotify. No. Oh. <laughs> no. No. You know, Spotify. Do you know who pays the least? The least? Yeah. Uh, I would imagine it would be like I don't know. Um, YouTube or You're supposed to know this you as I don't a, know You're as an artist <laughs> That, that, that should be number one Basically um, The least is YouTube Oh okay So and I was the, right about that yeah, <laughs> yeah You got that one right um, Who pays the most Is actually Napster Oh okay yeah, But Napster doesn't really have That many subscribers So Gotcha It really You know Alright kind of Irrelevant Well you second, learn something new every day Yep Second is title mm-hmm. So um, Spotify is Towards the bottom Yeah You know So Okay um, But uh, what's your social media? My social media is Kendra Black Music on uh, Instagram, Facebook. My Twitter is Kendra Black Live. All right. And my last question to you would be, what was the most difficult part of putting together the fire? Um, well, this project wasn't easy because it's all me. I mean, with the help from uh, amazing people that I gathered that I, um, you know, asked to be part of this project uh, to uh, mix it and produce it and all that uh, and help me out with the beats and everything. But the most, um, I would say the, the most challenging part was putting it all together because, again, I did this by myself. So <laughs> I'm really proud of it, but it was extremely hectic. <laughs> and any shout outs? Um, yes. Shout out to Lounge Studios um, and the owner, Walter. Shout out to Elena Martin and Naomi from um, my uh, music school, as well as Justin Stoney and uh, the producers on it. So um, Nicholas Babian, uh, Enrico Tiberi from um, Germany. And um, yeah. And Andros, uh, the EDM producer for uh, Storm and Set Me Free, which are, I, c- I think, the most electronic tracks on the album. Okay, okay. And if she forgot you, blame it on her mind and not her heart. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I want to thank you so much. Thank and you. And just to give you a heads up, um, I'm actually shutting down this broadcast studio. So you are my last guest wow. ever underneath the FLO Empire Network umbrella. So I want to thank you. Wow. For being my last guest up on this Thank platform, you for me. and um, I want you to go ahead and check out her album. Everybody, uh, you'll see me on the Put Me On Ink brand next. Other than that, I love you all. Support her. Support independent artists. She did it on her own. She financed it and all that other good stuff. Anybody that has ever for, um, chased their dream um, wanted people to support them, so support her on her dream. And I'm out of here. My name is David Glover, and I definitely do approve this message. I'm out.